One question that comes up uh, in figure drawing on a frequent basis is how to draw hair. Your first option is just to leave it sketchy and let the brain kind of do its work and fill everything in. Um, that, in essence, is about finding the essential lines within the hair that just kind of get it across. One of the things that made sense to me um, when my teacher was showing me how to do this was to think of the hair as a helmet with strands. Um, another option that you have is to mix tone and line, and this one is probably the one that most people teach and most people prefer, though it's not the, not the one that everybody uses all of the time. It's just one option of many. And in this case, I'm using um, some you know, watercolor emulation washes and ink to get this, get this idea across. What you want to do is break it down into, into like three or four simple values. So I've chosen kind of a, a medium dark tone, a medium tone, a light tone, and just the blank white of the uh, canvas in this case. And I'm going to run through and break those down, approximating them and not overcomplicating it. Um, hair is one of those things that most people have trouble because they try to get to the complexity of the hair immediately. Don't do that. Simplify it. Do uh, basic layers and you'll have an easier, easier time. And you can actually leave the wash just as it is. That's an option um, that gets the hair across just fine, um, in my opinion. Um, and you don't necessarily have to take it any further than that. Um, though you can. So what I'm doing here is I'm blending that out to kind of create a ground to put line on top of. Um, and what the line's going to do is um, that's going to build tone as well as give a little bit more direction. It's going to focus on the strands. So one thing the sketch did partially was to establish the direction that the hair was going. But here what I'm doing is I'm kind of mapping out the each time the hair kind of changes the direction that it's combed or growing in. And I'm using the reference as a tool, um, picking up the things that I think are interesting about it, and it's not the end-all be-all of the drawing. Um, that I've stuck to it extremely closely in this case. Um, so what this is going to do, if I kind of map out all those directions, is once I get that done, I can move through really quickly using a bunch of repeated lines to build up tone. Um, without having to think of what direction, how long or short those lines should be. I've already got it kind of mapped out for myself. The wash layer maps out approximately where the tone is going to go, and then the directions of the sketch um, show me like the angles that I need to use. So now I can kind of stop thinking and become a little bit machine-like and get this, get this sketch developed. And one of the things that I would encourage you to think about is form. You know, don't use the contours of the hair um, only. Definitely use them. Definitely um, follow them where they're necessary. But what I like to think about it is a photo shows kind of too much and too little. Um, we want it to. We want our drawing to to show form. So we use the photo as a tool to create form. So all of these lines that you use to build up tone here, I'm thinking of, well, how can they emphasize the dimension? How can they get more depth across than the photo shows? Um, how can I build this illusion that the hair is kind of going back in space and has this, has this angle uh, to it? So I think just by thinking of those, eventually you're going to figure out a way to do it. Um, but... What I'm, what the hair does conveniently in this case is it is it does um, give me a lot of form following marks um, and cross contour lines. So if I just follow the lines of the hair, I've got automatic cross contour, and that helps a great deal um, in building up this drawing. Um, one of the nice things um, about this about working like this is this gives you a chance to show off your mark making techniques and that's what I like about that option. Another option is to use only line um, and in this case this is with pen and ink. You can do this with pencil or charcoal too if you kind of use the point instead of the side. Um, 
So this is going to require that you build all your tone with line. And one of the things that's a good recommendation for using pen and ink for this sort of thing is to stay out of the light as much as possible and work in your darks and midtones. In this case, the dark and the midtone is kind of along the hairline and um, or right along the part, um, a little bit in the back and uh, a little bit in the middle. There's kind of a half tone towards the back as well. And you'll see that most of the time my marks are going to stick within these dark areas. And now that I've done this like two or three times, I've got the hang of where all these lines should go so I can speed up a lot. Granted, this is at double speed, but um, it's still I'm still moving pretty quickly through it. Um, one of the things that's nice about working digitally uh, is that you can just you know erase a layer and and try something different. If you're working analog, um, and I do this all the time, is I just redraw right next to um, what I've just drawn, and you'll notice there that on that half uh, or on the top of the hair, I didn't touch any of the highlight at all, really. Um, and that's because if I start going into the highlight with pen, it's going to create a really dark tone, and I don't want that very, very much. Um, so a lot of pen work is about economy. Um, and really what it's about is um, creating this illusion that these strands are kind of pulling together as a form. Here's another option, um, different medium, and this would work in charcoal and pencil, is just to use tone only. Um, it also works in wash, as you saw before. So I'm not even going to put any kind of strands in this, and you'll see that it kind of creates a, a convincing um, hair, bit of hair in the end. And what's nice about having options is that you can choose from all of these options or anything else that you can come up with to create the effect that you want or to um, do something new and different with uh, with your drawing. Um, you shouldn't just do it one way or think about only using one style or developing one style. Um, if you can be versatile with it and have a bunch of different approaches you can pick from, um, that gives you uh, a range to work with. and I think the the most skilled artist is the one with the biggest range, right? Um, and when you're learning, that's what you want to do. You want to go for building building up skill. You don't want to necessarily create a quality drawing every single time. That's for someone you know who's getting paid to do it. They have to they have to do something reliable um, and repeatable so that um, they can get a product out. But when you're learning, I think you just want to you know go for a bunch of different. Uh, different approaches and see um, see what you like, what you gravitate towards, what you need to work on, and go from there. So now that I've built tones, I've just built some darks, some midtones, some uh, some half tones, and so on, just like I did with all the other approaches. But this is going to be a lot softer of a result because I'm not going in with any um, with anything but kind of the default um, paper texture. And because the rest of the drawing has kind of these lines on it, I'll build up some tone on the face just to kind of show you what that, you know, is going to indicate um, when you take the, the tonal approach to a drawing as a whole. Um, and in a second here, I'll turn off this layer um, of line work and you can kind of see that the tone kind of goes right for, for lighting and um, and kind of ignores that emphasis on line. Uh, and it's a good approach to have in your back pocket because um, you can create these kind of moody pieces um, that way. So there, so there it is, um, four different approaches uh, that you can use to drawing hair.